Hi everybody, it's Big Scribe here, back with another Bible study. And we are getting back into the book of Nehemiah, and today we're going to be in chapter 6. Sorry if I'm talking a little weird, I just got partials. Um, if you don't know those, like, replacement teeth. It's a little hard to talk with them, I'm starting to learn how to talk with them. And I figured I would do my first video with them. But we are going to be in chapter 6 today. Before I get started, I'd like to explain why I've been so inactive on BookTube lately. I am moving. Literally, Saturday, I am moving. And I'm moving to one of the apartments back here behind me. And Well, technically, it's in front of the road, but that's beside the point. But I'm going to be moving into a bigger, nicer apartment. I'm super excited. It's going to be super beautiful. And I will show you guys everything. And I'll probably start off on my Instagram, though. So you got to go follow me on Instagram. And when I get to 500 followers on Instagram... I'm going to have a huge giveaway, so make sure you follow me on Instagram, because I am like 175 away from that. Who misses me? Anyway, but uh, let's get into it. First, let's start with a word of prayer. Lord, we ask that you open our hearts and our minds to better know you, God. We ask that you help us to be strong and vigilant and to look for the threats surrounding us as we try to build our lives, God. Well, we ask that you help us to stay focused on you and your love and your commandments. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's get into it. First, I'm going to turn to the actual verse, if I can find it. <laughs> oh. I probably should have turned to it first, or shouldn't I? But that's just right. So anyway, I'm excited about moving because it's been a long time coming and it needed to happen. Uh, personally, I think it'll be good for me. But I'm nervous a little too because I don't know. How it's going to play out. There's a lot of extenuating circumstances around it, too. Um, basically, my landlord accused the floor joists in my apartment of breaking because of my weight. And wants me to, wanted me to sign an agreement saying I would pay for any damages that happened because of my weight in a new apartment. Which I think is a little unfair, but that's beside the point, so... Let's stay on topic if I can find it. There it is. 576. Oh. Duh. Okay. So, if you will, turn with me to Nehemiah chapter 6. Now it came to pass when Sambalot and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at the time I had not set up, set up the doors upon the gates. That Sambalot and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some, in some one of the villages in the plain, plain of Anu. That, but they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Then sent Sambalot his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time, with an, with an open letter in his hand, wherein was written, It is reported among the heathen, and, Gash, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel. For which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king according to these words. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee in, at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. For they, for they all made us afraid, saying, 
their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it be not done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. After I came unto the house of, Sh of Shemaiah, the son of Del Deliah, the son of Mahetabil, who was shut up, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night they will come they will they come to slay thee. But I said, Should I, should a man as I flee, and who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life, I will not go in. And lo I perceived that God had not sent him but that he had pronounced this prophecy against me, for Tobiah and Sambalot had hired him. Therefore was he hired, that I should be afraid, and do so, and sin, and that they might have manner for, for an evil report, that they might reproach me. My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sambalot, according to these their works, and on the prophetess Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets that have that have put me in fear. So the wall was finished in the twenty and fifth day of the month of Elud, in fifty and two days. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw that saw these things, that they were much cast down in their own eyes. For they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. Moreover, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah sent, came unto them. For there were many in Judah sworn unto them, because he was the son of Shechaniah and the son of Era. Of Era. And his son, Joanan, had taken the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Barakiah. Also they reported his good deeds before me, and uttered my words to him, and Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear. So let's discuss what just happened here. The wall is almost done. We have discussed up to this point how the wall is being built, or how... Nehemiah is rebuilding the wall, and Ezra is tasked with rebuilding, I believe, the temple. Nehemiah is trying to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. He is trying to make this wall to protect the city, and it's almost finished. The work that God sent him to do is almost complete, and now the rulers in the surrounding area, the bad guys, who don't believe in God, are are watching and saying, okay, we got to do something about this guy. He's He has too much influence, and this God has too much power, and this God is is working such great works too quickly. It was making them uncomfortable because they could see that God was causing this to happen, this wonderful, amazing thing to happen, and it made them nervous because they thought if God is helping him to rebuild this wall so quickly and so efficiently, does that mean this God will then come against us? So they start to turn on Nehemiah in a manner that they hadn't yet turned. They start trying to convince him to kind of um, give himself a bad name, in a way. Uh, first, they start out by just trying to meet with him because they did want to hurt him. And they couldn't just ransack the city and hurt him because there are people that were protecting him. So they literally had to get him alone and get him away from the city. So they tried to get him to come out and meet them, but he refused. And he knew what was going on because God showed him what was going to happen. Then they sent one of their servants with a letter. And the letter basically said that, okay, we're going to start, we've been, we have started this rumor that you're making yourself the king of Jerusalem, of Israel, and that you're rebelling against the king. And we have people that will vouch for this and say that you're rebelling against the king. And if you don't come meet us, we're going to tell the king this. And Nehemiah said, that it's not true. None of that's true. And you know it's not true. This is a lie that you have made up. 
and he still refused to go meet them. So then he seeks counsel with one of the other, one of the people in the city, and this person was hired by these bad guys, and the person tells him, "All right, let's go hide in the temple because they're going to come tonight and they're going to murder you." And he says, "Why would I? Why should I have cause to fear these people? What, I mean, what? I should trust God. God's going to protect me." And he knew that if he didn't trust God, that that would be sinning. And he wasn't going to go run and hide in fear. These people wanted him to sin. These people wanted him to doubt God. They wanted him to doubt God's power. So that's what they were trying to do, was get him to doubt and get him to fear. And they were trying to put that fear in him. And people kept coming and telling him about all these good works that the bad guys were doing and he was trying to focus on building this wall and finishing the wall and finally it's at the point of completion finally it's at the point where this wall is built to the specifications outside forces are always seeking to harm and distract you while you're trying to rebuild your life or build a better life i should say Outside forces are always trying to distract you from what God is trying to do. You have the media, you have friends, you even have family who will try to distract you. And you best believe that while you're trying to get to a right place with God, all eyes are going to be on you. They're waiting, waiting for you to make that one mistake and they're going to hold it over you for the rest of your life. And that is exactly what's going on here. Nehemiah is rebuilding this wall and all eyes are on him as he's building this wall. They are nervous because they see the great and wonderful work of God in Nehemiah's life. So it makes them nervous and they start to fear. So they want him to slip up. They want him to make a mistake. And they want to destroy everything that Nehemiah stands for. You have to resist listening to mocking spirits and voices. You have to keep your eyes on God. You have to always keep your eyes on the Lord and focus on Him and what He wants for you. And He is never going to lead you in a wrong direction. He will always give you courage and strength when you ask for it. Were you, when, you are at, when you are on the right path, Satan will lead people to try to ruin your good name. That's always going to happen. And this is all, this goes back to the people keeping their eyes on what you're doing. Satan wants you to slip up one time. And he wants to cause slander and rumors. And he wants to frame you, basically, and make you out to be this bad person. And make it seem like you're not changed. You're not a child of God. And, you know, sometimes we do slip up. But it's all about getting back up. And dusting yourself off and trying to make things better. And that's what building your building a better life is all about. Is you're trying to build a life that honors God and serves God. And you're trying to make it meaningful to the Lord. You've got to be strong and vigilant. You've got to really be in the Word. And you've got to be in the Word all the time. Because any second, Satan could attack you. And this could be spiritually, this could be emotionally, physically, financially. He's waiting for that moment to attack you when you're at your weakest. So always be strong, always be in the Word, always be focusing on the Lord. And one of the ways you do that is through prayer. You've got to talk to God. you got to read God's Word. You have constantly got to meditate on the words of God and let Him speak to you through those words. James 5.16 says the effectual, effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Constant prayer, constant focus on God, on your relationship with God can change the world around you. There's been medical studies done that state that prayer can actually heal. When people pray for someone, it can actually heal. Even... People have talked about how positive words towards plants can help plants to grow. Prayer, focusing on God, focusing on what's good and righteous, 
that will change the world around you and make you strong and able to fight back against any dangers that try to ensnare you. There will be people who are wolves in sheep's clothing. They want to convince you to sin, to doubt, to fear. There's going to be people in your life that you think are good. This could be preachers. This could be teachers. This could be other Christians in your church. This could be your next door neighbor. These people may seem good on the outside, but really they were sent by the enemy to distract you and to cause you to sin and doubt and fear and really feel like you can't trust God. You've got to be vigilant for those people and you've got to look out and look out and see when they're coming because they are coming constantly. They're on they're coming for you. And the way you do that is by trusting God. And you gotta trust God to help you discern if someone is trying to distract you and trying to cause you to sin and fail him. You've got to listen to what the Holy Spirit says to you. Constantly walk in the Holy Spirit. And listen to what God tries to tell you discerning people and places and situations. Because God will tell you all those things if you listen to Him and you focus on Him. He will lead you in the right direction. Now sometimes those people are going to come into our lives regardless. And God's going to let them come into our lives. Because He's trying to prepare us. And He's trying to strengthen us in our faith and our trust in Him. By keeping your eyes on God, you can get to that point where you're building your life. You can get to that point where your walls are built. The walls are built. Now it's time to build the houses and the, the businesses and everything else. But it's not a job that's done all at once. Building your a better life is literally a day-to-day -day thing. You have to do this every day. You have to wake up every day deciding to serve the Lord. You have to wake up making the conscious decision that today I'm going to honor God. That is what building a better life is all about. And what pe when people see what God is doing in your life, it will convict them. It will literally make them see his power and will make them fearful of what's going on in their lives. They know they're in the wrong place. They see you getting right with God. It convicts them and it makes them afraid. And that's why oftentimes they lash out at you. But you got to remember that when those people lash out, it's most likely because they themselves feel a conviction. They feel like something's wrong in them because they see the change in you. And your job is then to help them get to that point where they can start building their life by having a relationship with Jesus Christ. People will seek to outdo you in good works, but you got to stay focused on yourself. There's always going to be people who say, oh, well, he's doing this. So I can do this 10 times better. And they want to bring that focus off of you. They want to bring the focus off of God and what God is doing in your life. Just stay focused on yourself. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Other people are constantly trying to distract you, trying to cause you to sin, trying to cause you to doubt. you got to stay focused on you, because it's your life you're building, not anybody else's. I hope you really enjoyed this, and I enjoyed getting back into the book of Nehemiah with you. Hopefully next week we can do chapter 7 and 8 in one video, because chapter 7 is a little bit of a numbers chapter, so I'm going to add, add, go ahead and add in chapter 8 in there, so you guys have a little bit of something else, a little something juicy. Um, I am still going to be doing my book review for Clockwork Prince. I'm only 300 some pages in. Uh, I'm struggling because I'm moving and trying to do finals and write a paper on the Book of Romans and this so much stuff. I'm so tired. You just don't even know. But I have enjoyed doing this video with you guys. I love you all. God bless you. I hope you're doing good. Um, I'll go ahead and close in prayer. On some way down. Lord, we bless you and we honor you and we thank you, God. We praise you for letting us come together and have this time with you, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you continue to help us to keep our, our focus on you and what you're doing in our lives, God. We ask that you not let the devil distract us from your awesome and mighty work, Lord. In Jesus' mighty and holy and precious name, amen.
God bless you.